Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 17th. First up, this is from a friend, Brian D. from TechRadar.com. New 3D map of the galaxy is our most detailed look at the Milky Way yet, but still only covers 1% of the stars out there. Astronomers got a new toy in 2013. It's called Satellite Gaia. I've talked about that before on the TDD Report. Since launching in December of that year, it's been circling the sun, quietly taking photos of the rest of the galaxy. It's so powerful that it could receive the it could resolve the width of a human hair at a distance of 1,000 kilometers. There isn't much hair in space, but there are a lot of stars, and those stars are what Guy is interested in. Now, the Milky Way, as you know, or if you don't know, it's 100,000 light years across. It contains about a billion stars. Um, that makes up a uh, thousand times more complete than any existing map of the galaxy. Within the new map, both the position and movement of every star is charted. Now that's two million stars out of the um, uh, 100 billion stars that they're actually, they have the positions and the movement of the stars both, but they're eventually going to work on trying to get a detailed map. And if you're interested in actually downloading a copy of it, and warning, if you download the higher resolution images, it may take quite a while because I think the highest resolution available is about an 80 meg file, but it's uh, similar to this uh, picture I'm going to put up here. And I downloaded one of the medium resolution files, and you can still zoom in quite close to it right now. But eventually, if Gaia lasts another couple of years, we may actually end up charting the majority of, if not all of them. I don't think they intend to do all of them, but there's two years left in the mission, and uh, they're going to chart as many as they can and do the most detailed map. Well, this already is the most detailed map to date, but they're going to do what they can. If you care to download it, um, I'll give you the um, link to the article that I'm reading right now, and below that will be a link to where you can download a high resolution to the map. On that page, just look to the right and they'll have the various resolutions from uh, uh, just several megapixels uh, images to up to uh, huge resolutions of pictures. Okay, this next one is from the Christian Science Monitor. 6,200 years ago, did South Americans wear blue jeans? And it's actually kind of like uh, about the material in the dye. Not Egypt, but Peru. A discovery at an ancient temple site in Peru means that indigo dye was used to color cotton at least 16, 1,800 years before scientists had previously believed it has. And uh, this piece of material goes back to 6,200 years old. And you can actually see in the picture here that there is a little bit of blue dye on some of the fibers on here, and it's cotton fiber. And uh, they just say this, uh, the, some of the things about the cotton is kind of interesting here, too. I'll just, I'll, I'll start reading a few paragraphs here. It's this one, this article I find really interesting. It may not sound that way, being that it's talking about uh, indigo dye and cotton, but I think it really is. Archaeologists discovered the ancient cloth samples during the 2009 excavation of a Peruvian ceremonial mound known as the Huaca Prieta. After dating the dyed cotton scraps, researchers discovered that their samples were at least 1,800 years older than the next oldest instances of indigo dye use found in Egypt. The cotton used in Huaca Prieta fabrics, Gossipium barbadinase, is the same species grown today, known as Egyptian cotton. The study's lead author, Jeffrey Splits Tozer, said in a press release, and that's not the only cotton connection we made in this excavation. We may well not have had blue jeans if it weren't for the ancient South Americans. Peru is famous for its cotton. In fact, a particularly hardy cotton was domesticated at an undetermined site in Peru, likely along the northwest coast. The country's day modern day cotton the country's modern day cotton is practically insect resistant and often grown without insecticides or fertilizer. So that's kind of cool too, having a kind of cotton that's uh, not needing all kinds of chemical treatments and stuff like that. The cloth scraps at Huaca Prieta were found sandwiched in between layers of a ramp that led up to the temple. Originally, their blue coloring was hidden from archaeology workers because of the sooty material used to build the temple. As Dr. Splitz Tozer, an anthropologist at the George Washington University, told Live Science, after gently washing the cloth and using a technique called high-performance liquid chromatography, however, researchers discovered that they were holding the oldest indigo dyed fabric in the world. So kind of cool. If you get a chance, check it out. All the links will be down below. Next, um, I'm just going to limit myself to two articles because next I had a question I wanted to ask um, somebody that was an English teacher, and I happen to have an English teacher that's a very good friend. His name is Michael Jones, and uh, he's going to tell you um, the question that I wanted to ask him was, uh, what do you think about the fact that schools nowadays, some of the schools and grade schools, are not teaching um, regular cursive writing? So 
Here's what he had to say about that. So hello folks, this is Mike Haley 7 and I'm going to talk about something for the TDD report. This is for uh, the Suburban Rider, also known as the Mayor, also known as Chuck. And the question that Chuck put to me was, how do I feel as a teacher about the fact that cursive isn't really being taught anymore? So I'll just pontificate on this for a little bit. First of all, I teach English as a second language. So a great many of my students do not come from the tradition of cursive writing anyway. So they they do Roman print, you know, printing Roman uh, letters. Just your normal printing. And I do that too because I sucked at cursive when I was a kid. Just couldn't get it right. It never looked beautiful. Maybe it's because they didn't beat me. I don't know. Anyway, I went to uh, printing. And I do proper, you know, uppercase, lowercase. I'm not random. I used to be. And the, one of the rationales for not really doing cursive when I was younger is I used to worry about it. And my tutor said to me, what are you worried about cursive for? Everything's going to computers. Pretty soon you won't even be using a pen or a pencil anymore. So I didn't I didn't worry about it that much. I just printed. So how do I feel that young people today are not even being taught cursive? Well, I'm of two minds about it. My first mind about it is how are you going to sign things? And I know there's an answer to that already. In the very near future, you won't sign things anyway, because signatures can be forged very easily. And think about it, when you're signing a credit card uh, bill or you know, at the restaurant or whatever, does it really even mean anything? I mean, I've, I've received pizzas using my girlfriend's credit card, and I sign my name on, on the receipt, and nobody ever says a damn thing. I think it only ever comes up if somebody complains, says, somebody stole my card. But really, I don't really see the, the point of it in that regard. Let's say you're signing for a mortgage. We're going to sign a million times. How are you going to sign if you don't have cursive handwriting? I guess you're just going to have to print your name everywhere, which, which would take longer. One thing about cursive writing is... Uh, Hang on a second, I'm gonna pass this nice guy here. One thing about cursive writing is that um, you could do it a lot faster when you're signing your name. If you have to print it, I don't know what's gonna happen. I guess people will just start putting chicken scratch on there, I don't know. But again, it'll be retinal scans, it'll be thumbprints. It'll be, I don't know, breath scan or some crazy thing. Facial recognition software. So signing is kind of going the way of the dodo. I know that people like tradition, but nothing ever stays the same. Oh, that's where the barbecue is. Nothing stays the same. And as a result, things that used to be normal are now quaint and antique and like calligraphy. Back in the old days, everybody did calligraphy. Everybody went to school anyway. Nobody does calligraphy anymore except specialized. You know, you can go learn it on your own, take a class. But you, you would never write that way normally. Get out a fountain pen and start doing it. No. But I'm sure that when when ballpoint pens came out, or when 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 metal pen tips, what are the nibs? When metal nibs came out, I'm sure the the feather quill folks were like, oh, how dare you! You're ruining printing forever. You must use this bird feather and dip it in some buzzard pus, or whatever the hell they used back then. And so it's kind of the same thing now. You got 
people say, oh, you've got cursive is, that's how, I don't even know what their arguments are. Except for, how are you going to sign documents? We're losing a, an essential skill. Well, you know, your great-great-grandparents would look at you and say, you're stupid because you don't do calligraphy. And you'll get out and go, but calligraphy is, you know, it's old-fashioned, it's antique, and it takes too damn long. But there's no style. I mean, c yeah, cursive writing has style, yes, it's beautiful. But calligraphy's better. One good thing about cursive, it, it is faster, like I said. Anyway. So, I like cursive writing for signatures only. That's only all I ever use it for. But... I don't think you're going to, you can't change the way history's going. Everything's going toward computers. People will just be printing if, whenever they write with their hands. It'll be printing instead of cursive. And signing documents won't be a thing anymore. You'll just submit a scan. And think about that. If you could do a retinal scan, and that applies to all the documents that you're going to do for your mortgage or whatever, certainly would save your wrist. And people in the future will look back at us and say, can you believe these people used to sign their name 30, 40, 50 times for contracts and stuff until their wrist was all exhausted? Ha ha ha, those primitive people. Now all you have to do is nothing because the cameras that are everywhere have facial recognition technology and so you don't have to sign anything you just kind of look at the camera and raise your eyebrows, yes, and you're all set, or something like that. And maybe there are some of you who say, no, that'll never happen. We'll never have a computer take over for physically having to sign your name. And to you I say, really? You really believe that? Things change so much. You can really predict what's going to be in the future with that much certainty? The only thing you can count on is change. And there's a, you can see it's changing already. You just don't like it. Change is inevitable, folks. You may not like it, and I don't like it necessarily, but it's just the way of things. The world isn't going to end if you don't know how to write a cursive M. These are not the signs of the end times. Okay, thank you, Michael Jones, for your contribution to the TDD report. I will have a link below in the description box to Mike's channel. He's a moto vlogger and a good friend of mine. I've uh, actually went out and visited him in North Carolina. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.